Hi, my name is Jacob Yu, and today I'm going to be presenting work done on the impact of annotator demographics on sentiment dataset labeling. Our main research goal was to quantify uncertainties and biases in sentiment datasets caused by demographic differences of annotators. Our first contribution was to create a large-scale dataset containing the demographics of the annotators as well as the sentiment analysis annotations for different modalities. We then used this data to determine the effects that annotator demographics can have on dataset annotations. We also want to determine the effect that different types of modalities have on the dataset. We built our dataset using 500 video review clips from CMU Mose, a dataset of multimodal sentiment analysis used in many previous works. We extract the three modalities from the selected video review clips, the text, audio, and video modalities. We also use the combined modality videos with all three modalities for the dataset. Using the crowdsourcing platform Prolific, we also gathered a wide variety of crowd workers to annotate our data. We had over 1,000 annotators and over 30,000 annotations. Annotators were given 30 randomly selected video samples from a random modality type from 500 unique video samples, and they were asked to rate the sentiment of the speaker in the video. We also collected the demographic information of the annotators for the dataset. In total, we received about 15 annotations per video sample. As it is commonly known, crowdsourced demographics are often quite skewed, as shown on the figure to the right, which shows a majority of white annotators. In order to correct this skew and provide good analysis of the data, we must control certain demographics. We achieve this by gathering data from underrepresented populations in crowdsourcing demographics. Through this process, we were able to reduce the standard deviation of our annotator demographic distribution. For example, our age went from 0.24 to 0.17, gender went from 0.41 to 0.33, and ethnicity went from 0.32 to 0.24. By building a data site like this, we can study the effect that annotator demographics has on our data set. To the right, we can use something called a Monte Carlo simulation to observe effects of different distributions of annotators, and we can compare this against Mose. As you can see on the right, as age goes up, there is a greater similarity with original annotations as well as an increase in correlation. Through these experiments, we can generally see that matching demographics to crowd worker demographics showed higher similarity with previous annotations. We can also measure the performance of this specific group of annotators as compared to other annotators. To do this, we can compare model performance for different annotator groups. We can also compare human performance for the different annotator groups. For example, in the bottom, we can create a group of all female and all non-female annotators. We, we can then measure how accurate these predictions are using the groups from the dataset. As we can see, the top three models are existing state-of-the-art models trained for the MOSE dataset. When they are trained on data for groups on all female annotators, as can be seen on the left, they are more accurate than when trained on all non-female annotators, which is presented on the right. This is also true for human predictions. This implies that the original annotations likely did not control for the demographics of the annotators, and thus, the evaluation, as well as the models developed, were likely inadvertently biased to work better for the general crowdsourcing population, which is predominantly female. We also found that multimodal ratings on multimodal data generally seemed more positive than unimodal ratings. We also found that text had, on average, the least positive ratings. But we also found that there were not really any large changes observed in agreement scores between the modalities and the multimodal, multimodal data, 
However, video annotations tended to have the least amount of agreement out of all of them. So our recommendations are for researchers to be generally cautious and watch out for any biases that may appear in data, as there are most likely other properties that were not explored in this paper. We recommend HCI researchers to explore and investigate subtle biases in data, as these are readily captured by new and powerful models. We also recommend the gathering and release of properly anonymized annotator information with datasets for future evaluation. We believe that this should make way for future models that can mitigate these biases. We also believe that it may be to the benefit of existing or newly developing datasets to create a richly annotated subset of data to serve as a more accurate gauge. Lastly, we also want to recommend that annotated data have balanced population demographics. In summary, we found that demographic groupings can impart a significant effect on sentiment labels and that it also generalizes across all modalities. This effect is quite large even when performing relatively straightforward tasks such as binary sentiment classification, and we can observe up to 4.9% of a difference in accuracy. Additionally, we show in our work that crowdsource annotations, which do not control for demographics of annotators, will not work equally well for all groups, especially underrepresented groups. We hope that HCI researchers and ML researchers can work together to solve this problem within the limitations of each domain. We also release this dataset uh, to help out with this research, and we hope that it can be used for development of less biased models and for the future. We encourage those who are interested to check out our paper, as we have many other comparisons between different demographics, different modalities, and just a lot of data listed there. Thank you.